from the brilliant Benny Leonard and the all-action Lou Ambers through to the impressive Ike Williams and the talented Jimmy Carter to the excellent Carlos Ortiz and the fearsome Roberto Duran. Six decades of classic lightweight fights featuring six of the division's greatest champions. Reigning lightweight champion Benny Leonard defends against Lou Tondla. Jersey City, 27th of July, 1922. As round one gets underway, there is an electric excitement throughout the jam-packed arena. This is a dream match. The champion is a magnificent boxer whose unequaled ability has confounded 81 opponents since he won the World Lightweight Championship five years ago in 1917 from Freddie Welch. Lou Tendler, who has the unorthodox southpaw stance, leading with his right hand, is in the prime of his magnificent career. Lou turned professional nine years ago in 1913, and during the past nine years, he has lost only three of 85 professional fights and has never been stopped. The 24-year-old Tendler was born in 1898 and started his career as a bantamweight. At the age of 15, he was earning $17 as a main event fighter. Now, nine years later, he's in the process of earning $116,000 for one fight. While Leonard is relying on his beautiful boxing ability, watch Tendler pump in four powerful lefts to Benny's body. That type of punching will slow up any fighter. Because of Tendler's fearless attitude in the ring, plus his extraordinary punching ability, he is considered by boxing experts to be one of the greatest southpaw fighters in the entire history of boxing, regardless of division. Benny is boxing smartly as Tendler tries to charge in with a left to the body. Leonard sidesteps and Tendler nearly goes flying out of the ring. The champion, Benny Leonard, turned professional in 1911. He has the fantastic record of having lost only three times in 195 professional prize fights. The fighters who have attempted to beat Leonard as a group are a who's who of boxing. Rocky Kansas, Richie Mitchell, Johnny Dundee, Willie Ritchie, Ted Kid Lewis, Freddie Welsh, a group of fighters unsurpassed in any period of boxing, were all unsuccessful in their attempts to get a single win over Benny Leonard. The referee separates the fighters as we get to the end of round one. The bell sounds for the start of round three. In round two, Leonard continued to box masterfully against the difficult, unorthodox southpaw style of challenger Tendler. Lou pressed the champion throughout the round and set a blistering pace. But here, in round three, the fight is settling down to exactly what the boxing experts had predicted. A hard-punching, fearless challenger against a master ring technician who has time and again demonstrated his ability to thwart the efforts of the very finest fighters in the division. When Leonard knocked out Freddie Welsh May 28, 1917 to gain the world's lightweight championship, it was generally agreed, in spite of the great fighters in the lightweight division, that Leonard's extraordinary ability would hold the lightweight championship for many years to come. Benny has disappointed no one. The past five years, as lightweight champion of the world, Benny has been virtually the most nearly perfect fighting machine that the boxing world has ever seen. It is in fact a testimonial to the superb unorthodox style of Lou Tendler that knowledgeable boxing men have given him an excellent chance to do something that not one of the present greats in the lightweight division could come close to doing, taking the lightweight championship of the world from the phenomenal Benny Leonard. Leonard steps in with a right, but gets hit with a right from the sharp counter-punching Tendler. Just eight weeks ago, Tendler won a sensational 15-round decision over knockout-punching Johnny Dundee. This tremendous victory, though not unexpected, catapulted Fiery Lou into this world lightweight championship fight with champion Leonard. It can't be said that there was a cordial feeling between the two men. Benny and Lou were scheduled to fight one year ago in 1921. Each man agreed to put up a $5,000 forfeit price in the event that the fight didn't take place. When the fight date approached, Benny announced that he wouldn't be able to go through with it, as he had broken a hand in training. Lou felt that Leonard wasn't really hurt, so Tendler claimed and received the forfeit of $5,000. Leonard demanded the return of the money, and Lou refused. When the two men finally got together this evening, it could be said in all fairness that this is something of a grudge fight. Leonard is using his left jab like a stinging dart. 
but Tendler shoots three hard rights to the body. Lou is confident that those body shots will eventually slow up the champion. Benny continues to use that left as we get to the end of round three. We move now to round eight. In rounds four through seven, each fighter alternately showed to advantage. Lou steps in and rips the left to the jaw of the champion. The blow staggers Benny as his knees buckle. See how Leonard instinctively catches hold of Tendler. Benny whispers to Lou, you're getting a little fresh, kid. I'm going to nail you in the next round. Benny's glib tongue gives him those few extra precious seconds, which he so desperately needs after stopping one of Tendler's vicious straight left-hand punches. Throughout the remainder of the round, Benny calls upon his vast experience and superb boxing ability in order to stave off defeat. That was the first time Leonard felt the full force of Tendler's tremendous punching strength. Now Benny knows he can't take any more liberties with this young kid from Philadelphia. Leonard had been warned repeatedly prior to the fight that Tendler can take you out of there with one punch. Leonard's only comment was, no matter how hard a man throws a punch, it has to land on the target to be effective. Leonard is fighting a strictly defensive battle here in the eighth round. Tendler is more confident now. He's landed that big left hand on the champion's jaw, and he's certain he can do it again. Two years ago, when Leonard fought Charlie White, White staggered Leonard to his heels with a smashing left-right combination. Just when everyone thought the fight was all but over, including Charlie White, Leonard landed a crushing right to the jaw, and the fight was over in 10 seconds. Tendler knows that Leonard is extremely dangerous when he's hurt, so the challenger can't abandon his defense while he's carrying the attack to Benny. As round eight draws to a close, Leonard has survived the toughest round he's fought in 10 years. Round 12, the last round of this great championship fight, gets underway. Round 11 was very close, with neither fighter gaining a clear-cut advantage. Leonard, the master boxer, knows that he only has to last the round in order to keep his championship. Here in 1922, the no-decision rule had been put into effect. This rule makes it impossible for Benny to lose his championship by the decision of the judges. Lou has to knock him out in order to win, and he came very close to doing just that in the eighth round. The experts have made Leonard a slight favor tonight, but everyone knows that anything can happen when you get a man with the determination, the fighting heart, and the knockout punch of Lou Tendler. Prior to the fight, former lightweight champion of the world, Freddie Welsh, said that the Leonard Tendler fight was a contest that even the experts would all disagree in trying to pick the winner. Welsh said the difficulty was both men were experts at the style they each employed, and it was a case of the immovable object being struck by the unstoppable force. It's no wonder that there weren't enough seats in Boyle's 30 Acres to hold all of the fans that wanted to get in. As the round draws to a close, it's apparent to everyone that they have just seen one of the great ring classics of all time. Forty years later, these two fighting giants will be the yardstick used to measure the champions who came after them. There's the bell ending the fight. Leonard fought like the master he is. Courageous, brilliant, and to the last ounce a champion. But he fought a man worthy of his greatest efforts. And after 12 dazzling rounds, He's still Benny Leonard, lightweight champion of the world. Double world champion Henry Armstrong defends his lightweight crown against Lou Ambers. New York, 22nd of August, 1939. We're in round one. Henry Armstrong with a white stripe. Hank weighs 135 pounds tonight. Amber's 134 and a half. This is the second time Armstrong and Ambers have met. The year before, Armstrong won the lightweight title from Ambers in a 15-round decision. Tonight's bout is a return match. By beating Ambers in their first fight, 
Armstrong became the first man in history to hold three titles at one and the same time. He held the featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight crowns. After that battle, Armstrong gave up the featherweight crown, so now he's the welterweight and lightweight champion. Round one. Armstrong has penalized the second round because of a low blow, but he takes the third round by a wide margin. Now round four of this 15-round bout for the world's lightweight title between champion Henry Armstrong and Lou Ambers. In the last two and a half years, Armstrong's chalked up 46 straight victories, 39 by Kales. Amber slipped that time. No knockdown. The referee takes the fifth round away from Armstrong because of low blows. Then, Amber's outboxes him in the sixth, seventh, and eighth. In the twelfth and thirteenth rounds, Hurricane Hank batters Amber's all over the ring. Now we're in round 14. Armstrong looks as good tonight as he did when he beat the great Barney Ross for the welterweight championship. That night, Hank not only won the title, but he gave Ross such a bad beating, Barney retired from the ring. round 14. Now the 15th and final round of this battle for the world's lightweight title between champion Henry Armstrong and Lou Ambers, the former champion. The crowd is very angry because Armstrong's been penalized four rounds for low blows. They don't think the referee was justified. Some of the fans have been shouting, fake. In their first fight, Armstrong was penalized two rounds for low blows. But even so, he beat Ambers and won the title.
Armstrong trying desperately for a knockout. That would leave no doubt about any decision tonight. The end of the fight. The winner, and again, the world lightweight champion, Lou Ambers. Armstrong is bitterly disappointed. The crowd doesn't like the decision either. They think Armstrong should have won. Ike Williams defends the lightweight title against former holder Bo Jack. Philadelphia, 12th of July, 1948. Ike Williams comes out for round one in the lighter trunks. The challenger, Bo Jack, is wearing the black trunks with the white stripe. Ike Williams, with back to camera, won the world lightweight title in 1947, just last year, when he KO'd Bob Montgomery in Philadelphia. The champion has defended the world lightweight title once. Ike took a unanimous 15-round decision over Enrique Bolanos just six weeks ago in Los Angeles. Bojack, here forcing the action in round one, tying up Williams, won the lightweight title in 1942 six years ago when he KO'd Tippy Larkin in New York. Bo then lost the world lightweight title to Bob Montgomery in 1943 and then regained it once again four months later in a 15-round decision. Bojack to the left of your screen can bomb with both hands. Champion Ike Williams is known as a boxer puncher. Williams with back to camera has a crisp left jab. Fighters throwing ripping punches here in round one. Bojack throwing bombs. And there's the end of round one. The champion, Ike Williams, won round two with accurate counterpunching. Round four was scored evenly. Here in round five, both fighters are still very sharp, both looking to score a clean knockout. Of the six fights the champion, Ike Williams, has won this year, the most notable was a hard-fought 10-round decision over Kid Gavilan in New York City. Bojack staying all over champion Williams. The referee separates the two fighters. Bo loves the infighting.
Bo Jack, like champion Williams, began his professional career in 1940, eight years ago. Bo's manager, Chick Wergelis, says his fighter is trained very hard, and he's very confident that Bo will regain the world lightweight title tonight. Both men throwing bombs in there. Williams coming on strong and Bojack comes right back. of a sensational round five. Here in round six, Ike Williams looks definitely to be the stronger of the two fighters. Sharp, jolting punches by Ike Williams. Williams pouring it on, a barrage of punches. Bojack is in trouble. Bojack staggers backward into the corner. Williams pouring it on. Jolting punches, ripping combinations. Williams asked the referee to stop the fight. And the referee finally steps in and awards Ike Williams a sensational sixth round knockout victory. Williams considered by many to be one of the greatest lightweight champions of all time. A sensational victory for Ike Williams. Jimmy Carter attempts to regain the lightweight championship from Patty DeMarco the man he lost it to. San Francisco, 17th of November, 1954. Champion Patty DeMarco comes out for round one in the black trunks. Former champ Jimmy Carter is wearing the white. Jimmy wants to prove that the lightweight title belongs to him, and he's trained furiously for tonight's fight. The 26-year-old DeMarco is five years younger than Carter. DeMarco's manager, Jimmy Dixon, says his fighter is trained very hard for this fight and fully expects DeMarco to retain the title. DeMarco, in black trunks, began his ring career professionally in 1945, nine years ago. DeMarco won the lightweight title in March, eight months ago, when he took a tough 15-round decision from this same Jimmy Carter in New York. DeMarco landing snappy punches on the inside as the referee breaks the two fighter. There's no feeling each other out here in round one. DeMarco is carrying the fight to challenger Carter. This is DeMarco's first bout since winning the title. Carter ties up DeMarco on the inside.
A tough round one for both fighters. And there's the end of the round. The champion, DeMarco, boxed cleverly and managed to win rounds two through five. Carter won rounds 10 through 13 by a close margin. DeMarco is still hanging in there, but here in round 14, Carter is definitely ahead. Carter won the world lightweight title in May 1951, three years ago, when he KO'd the great Ike Williams in New York. Carter has actually held the lightweight title twice. He lost the title to Loro Salas in May of 1952 and regained it six months later when he took a sharp 15-round decision from Salas. Carter still pressing champion DeMarco here in round 14. Since losing the title to DeMarco six months ago, Carter has had two bouts. He KO'd Charlie Riley at St. Louis and in his last fight just three weeks ago, he took a 10-round decision from Freddie Herman at San Francisco. Carter's manager, Willie Ketchum, is very confident that Carter will regain the lightweight title tonight. A tremendous right uppercut by Jimmy Carter. Jimmy seems to have everything his own way here in round 14. A crushing uppercut by Carter. DeMarco seems to be weary. Champion DeMarco fighting back. What's holding Patty on his feet? And Patty goes down at the end of the 14th round. His seconds help him to his corner. The question is, can DeMarco answer the bell for the 15th round? Courageously, DeMarco answers the bell for the 15th round. It's just a matter of time as Carter has taken over. Warming dynamite punches by Jimmy Carter as the referee pulls Jimmy off the champion. It's scored as a knockdown. DeMarco continues as Carter swarms in there. The referee stops the fight, awarding the world lightweight championship once again to Jimmy Carter. In sensational fashion, Jimmy Carter has bombed his way back to the title against one of the most courageous lightweight champions in the history of the division, Patty DeMarco. Jimmy Carter once again becomes the world lightweight champion, putting himself in the record book as the only three-time holder of the world lightweight title. Having unified the division, Carlos Ortiz defends the undisputed lightweight title against Ismael Laguna. New York. 16th of August, 1967. Round four at Shea Stadium in the lightweight championship of the world. The champion, Carlos Ortiz, on the right. Flicking out a left hand. He's wearing the blue trunks, the lighter trunks. Ismael Laguna from Panama, the ex-champion. The speed boy, wearing the darker trunks. Say, 
Laguna keeping those gloves up high. It's a warm night here at Shea Stadium and a lot hotter under the ring lights. And one wonders if the constant moving of the challenger Laguna might not sap his strength in the later rounds. It's quite possible. I remember another time when Ray Robinson was easily defeating Joey Maxim for the light heavyweight title when Ray suddenly collapsed from the heat. But it was a much hotter night that night. was great. There have been no knockdowns, although Laguna has been rocked a few times. Ortiz in the lighter trunks with the white stripe down the side, Laguna with the dark trunks. Ortiz has been devastatingly accurate with that right hand, no question about it. Laguna won the title from Ortiz back in 1965. Ortiz regained it a few months later. Ortiz seems to be defending it well tonight. This is the 15th and final round. The judges are Al Burl and Jack Gordon and the referee Arthur McCanny. The three of them will give the decision should it go the limit. is half over. Laguna trying to get the knockout himself if he can. But his efforts haven't got the earlier sting. Less 
than half a minute to go. Laguna just scored with a brilliant uppercut, but it's too late, I'm afraid, for him. Ortiz has fought a great fight. Ten seconds left in the fight. Up-and-coming lightweight prospect Roberto Duran faces Hiroshi Kobayashi, Panama City, 16th of October, 1971. Roberto Duran, a rising star, and you can see from the size of the crowd in Panama City just how much of a stir he's making. Just 20 years old, 25 fights and 25 wins. Duran on the right-hand side of your picture now. A big puncher, 25 of those victories, 20 of them by knockout. Kobayashi, 27 years old, 7 years older, neat, skillful boxer in his 74th professional fight. And you can see that he's got quick hands, but Duran just really launches himself. Looking to detonate big punches almost with every shot he throws. Kobayashi bravely trying to fight back off the ropes, but Duran's trying to take him out in the opening round. Duran won the last fight against Benny Huertas in round one in Madison Square Garden, and he's looking for a matchup against the world champion Ken Buchanan and he is a very very dangerous man indeed Kobayashi former junior lightweight champion with the WBA held that title for three and a half years but this opening period is largely going the way of Duran really looking to unload Oh, good work again from Duran, and the crowd is on its feet. <laughs> Terrific opening onslaught, and I tell you what, Kobayashi is doing well to get through this. Getting a ticking off from the referee for pushing Duran down on the back of the head. Kobayashi, not a noted puncher. He's not finding Duran difficult to hit, but he's finding him mighty difficult to budge. Such was the ferocity of that early attack of Duran. You almost get the impression that he's taking a little bit of a breather now. Caught on the chin by Kobayashi as he came in with that left lead. And Kobayashi gets through the storm. Kobayashi's neat skills keeping him through into the sixth round. Fight scheduled to go 15. Could well be that Duran, if he wins this, and the signs are that he will, if he wins it, he might go on and fight in a challenge for Ken Buchanan's world title. Good right hand from Kobayashi, still showing good hand speed.
Duran so busy and so tough. Great tradition, of course, of Hispanic fighters threatening in the lower weight divisions. And it looks as though there's another one here. Duran, very, very tough. But Kobayashi going in well. Working away to the body, but you see the punches almost bounce away off Duran. It really seems to have no effect. Kobayashi suggesting he'd been caught low. Referee merely saying box on. And Duran emphasises the point by hammering it in a terrific shot to the solar plexus left hook. Kobayashi suddenly starting to look a little bit tired. Kobayashi getting told off the holding and there's a good right hand in there from Duran once again the referee has to split them suddenly become a very busy man the crowd don't like that Duran certainly adding to his misfortune by going in low good left hand from Duran Kobayashi throwing a lot of punches, but the powers with Duran, the youngster. Good left into the body from Kobayashi, though. Closing seconds at the sixth home, Kobayashi's caught. He felt that one right onto the temple, it was the right hand and the bell didn't come a moment too soon. Seventh round, Kobayashi in trouble at the end of the sixth and Duran will know it. If any fighter gets caught flush with a punch onto the temple he's going to be in trouble Oh, he's going again. Oh terrific combination from Roberto Duran, Hiroshi Kobayashi no way in the world is he going to get up from that. This is a star in the making. And Kobayashi's out. Roberto Duran has won it. Win number 26. And remember the name. He's going a long, long way. Roberto Duran.